Hello, welcome back to a brand new episode of Blow the Whistle. We're live from Media City with the latest on the North West Sport. From Premier League latest to what's happening with University Sports, we have you covered this afternoon. I'm Max. And I'm Johnny. Remember to subscribe to Keys TV on YouTube and be sure to follow us on social media at blowthewhistle.us. Keep in to date, keep up to date with the conversation by using hashtag blow the whistle. Johnny, yeah. good to see you. Good to see you Welcome as well. Welcome to the Blow with the Whistle team. Yes. Um, how's life? What have you been up to this weekend? Watching uh, much sport? Uh, well, I can't remember much of the weekend, Max, but uh, <laughs> I can, due to exterior activities, yeah. I don't want to go into too much. Okay. However, yeah, there was a wonderful weekend of sport. Good. Uh, your team were in action, Forest against Thanks. Tottenham. Yeah. My team were in action, a little bit of a better result for yeah. Burnley at the weekend. Mm. But though there's been some cracking games. Have you managed to catch up with any of it yourself? Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, I mean, Burnley are high flying at the moment. Oh. It's, uh, it, it's an interesting... Uh, interesting team to follow at the moment company's done a, a, an amazing job we were yeah. just talking before we came on air yeah. about Sean Dyche and whether if he'd have stayed at Burnley mm. would he be able to get the same results and, yeah. and you kind of said definitely not no I think it's just a, a transition really Max I mean I said like Dyche had such a good time at the club mm. and he was forever be remembered as a legend of the, of the club but ultimately every dog has its day I guess and at, at, at that moment in time the harsh reality was Probably things had gone stale under Sean Dyche. Not many people could see it, but it happened. And now look at the results, Vincent. Companies come in, different brand of football, absolutely killing the league. Mm. And it's it's down to his remarkable management, really, I think, at the, at the, at the forefront of it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Forrest, it's another story about Forrest, is well, that we just can't win away from home, Johnny. I don't know what's wrong with us at the moment. Well, I don't think you signed enough players, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was only the uh, 75, wasn't it, um, in, the, in the summer? Yeah, 20, uh, 23, I think. Wait, no, it, it actually might have gone up to 25. I, yeah, I, Matt, it, well, there was I'm a lot, sure. wasn't there? And to yeah. be fair, there's a lot of pressure on Steve Cooper at that point mm. because he'd done a remarkable job last year. We were just yeah. saying before I went to that game at Wembley, I was in the press box, <laughs> mic drop, and, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it, you know, he'd done a remarkable job. And now, with all these players coming in, amalgamating a squad to compete in the mm. Premier League. It's easier said than done. And uh, to be fair, I think he's doing quite a good job at the yeah. moment. I know you're a bit more... Mm. Yeah, I think, I think, I think there, there is problems that need, that need to be fixed urgently with Forrest. Yeah. Um, defensively especially. You go away from home, the team almost sets up to lose in a way. You mm. get, you know, almost when Forrest concede one away from home, you know that we aren't going to come back. It's going to be impossible. Mm. I mean, just to kind of touch on Forrest's luck, you mean, I mean, we get a penalty at the weekend against Tottenham. Mm. You 3-1 down if you get a second there's two minutes left make, makes the game very interesting mm. we get a penalty thanks to VAR are mm. you steps up what does he do he misses the penalty yeah good save Forster then yeah well exactly yeah, yeah. right we'll have we will have more on Forest Burnley yeah. throughout the show yeah well there we go it's been a, a slightly different weekend of Premier League action especially if you were wishing for a match of the day episode on a Saturday night yes match of the day was a slightly different 20 minute show on Saturday with no commentary or in studio pundits or even guests it all comes after England captain and Leicester legend and now main BBC sport presenter Gary Lineker finding himself in a little bit of controversy over some social media use let's go to our main man Brendan Cox with all the latest on game week 27 so, unlike Gary Lineker, I will be able to bring you some analysis of this weekend's Premier League game. We start off on the South Coast, where AFC Bournemouth hosted Liverpool at the Vitality Stadium for the early kickoff on Saturday. Earlier in the season, Jurgen Klopp's men had hammered the Cherries 9-0 at home. You would have been forgiven for thinking that Lightning could strike twice, but Liverpool capitulated after January signing Dango Atara showed his pace on the right side to ease past Virgil van Dijk putting in a cross that found none other than Philip Billing. Mohamed Salah would fail to hit the target from the penalty spot for the first time in his Premier League career. Now in the 3 o'clock kickoffs, Dwight McNeil lit up Goodison Park in just 35 seconds as the Toffees made a bright start against Brentford. The Bees would end their unbeaten run of 12 matches on Merseyside as they failed to respond for the remaining 89 minutes. At Elland Road, Jack Harrison was the name on everybody's lips. He provided the assist for the first half equaliser against Brighton, but put one in his own net 16 minutes after the restart. He would reclaim some dignity in the 78th minute as he hammered home a goal from a short corner. At the King Power, Leicester looked set to enter half-time tied at 1-1 with Chelsea before a first-half stoppage time goal from Kai Havertz sank the Foxes. A clever volley from Mateo Kovacic in the second half would seal the misery for Leicester. In London, a Harry Kane double would seal victory over visitors Nottingham Forest. Sun Hyung Min scored late, but Joe Worrell scored even later to deny Fraser Forster the clean sheet. 
In Saturday's late kickoff, none other than Erling Haaland would go on to break the deadlock between Man City and Crystal Palace under the floodlights at Selhurst Park. The Norwegian dispatched a penalty to register his 28th goal of the season. On to Sunday now, and Arsenal continue to impress, beating Fulham 3-0 away. Leandro Trossard got the assist for all three goals. Manchester United, however, failed to beat Southampton at home, no thanks to a Casemiro red card early on. He will be out for four matches. No goals for Marcus Rashford this time. West Ham and Aston Villa also shared the points at London Stadium. Ollie Watkins on a fine run of form found the net in the 17th minute, but this was cancelled out by Saeed Benrahma's penalty less than 10 minutes later. In Sunday's late kickoff, Kieran Trippier would continue his fine work for the Magpies with an assist for Alexander Izak in the 26th minute against Wolves in front of a home crowd. Wang Hee Chan would equalise late in the second half, but it would be none other than Miguel Almiron who had the last laugh. So with that, there's been a bit of movement in the table. Bournemouth climb off the bottom but do not escape the relegation zone. They are replaced by a fellow southerner Southampton. Everton escape the zone at the expense of Leeds. At the opposite end, things are looking rosy for Arsenal, who continue their impressive title charge five points clear at the top. Despite the draw with the Saints, Man United will take solace in the fact that they still have a game in hand over Spurs, who sit just two points behind them in fourth. For Spurs, they must be weary of the ground shaking beneath their feet. They are four points above Newcastle in fifth, but the Magpies have two games in hand. Brighton could theoretically challenge for the top four too. They have three games in hand over Spurs, but they are nine points behind. Thanks, Brendan. Absolutely, Max, the future boy for m and uh, He'll be back next week with uh, more from the Premier League. Yes, definitely. Johnny, looking at that league table makes me incredibly worried, despite yes. Forrest sitting 14th. Maybe some people would argue a comfortable position. Mm. There's two points just separating. Is it, what, the bottom? Is it the third from bottom and... Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's an amalgam. I mean, it, it's a it's a huge pit of teams. Anything could happen. You've got new managers coming into the in, coming into the game at the moment. I mean, Sean Dyche, Everton, for example, mm. really has taken expectations, which were on the floor for them, really, uh, in, into another into another way. And having Grazia at Watford as well, another example of someone who could lift their lift their club's uh, fortunes a lot. Yeah, a hundred percent. We'll have more from uh, more from that lately, and uh, in the next few weeks as well. Yes, so Burnley have been placed in some hot water as a result of some administrative wrongdoings uh, with the EFL. So I'm about to run back to my apartment change and give you the latest on the situation. So Burnley have been given a transfer ban or a transfer embargo by the EFL, which means they cannot sign any players at this current moment in time. And the rule is in place because Burnley were deemed to have misled the EFL on some administrative errors. In November, Alan Pace and the team at ALK Capital who run Burnley wanted to change their auditors. And they did change their auditors in a way of trying to make a change the way the football club was being run ever so slightly in the background. However, in doing that, their collaborative efforts to keep the EFL informed with financial figures and so on and so forth hasn't quite kept up. And as a result, the EFL have decided to put this ban in place for Burnley on transfers until the club can find a resolution. Now, with the, the leverage buyout that ALK underwent, that was uh, pointed out with the change of auditors, I believe. Um, that shouldn't have taken this long, which obviously, again, plunges the whole uh, stuff into question, but... Yeah, multiple sources have said that nothing serious. Fans and the club should expect it to be done at the end of next month. Here's what the club have had to say so far. We can confirm that we have provided draft accounts and financial information to the EFL's club financial reporting unit. And we continue to have regular dialogue with the unit to ensure we remain as open and as transparent and answer any questions the league may have. We believe the EFL will have no issue with the detail of our accounts other than their late submission and fully understand and support their position and efforts to sanction any club who fails to comply with any of their regulations. The kind of boost morale between the fan bases is that Sheffield United and Huddersfield have also been hit with the exact same transfer embargo uh, in recent 
in recent months, Huddersfield being a day later than than Burnley were. So there's nothing really to worry about in in my eyes. So the club are confident that a resolution can be found. After all, in a couple of months' time, it's expected that Burnley will be back in the Premier League, so they won't have to deal necessarily with the EFL. However, Alan Pace and team won't want to let this drag on, and they seem confident that a resolution can be found in the weeks and months to come. Johnny, thank you very much. Yes. Nice quarter zip there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the graphics were so well done, you might have missed it, but it was Will Lancaster, actually, that was on that, was on that okay. interview. Freelance journalist, really good guy, uh, offering his thoughts on what's been quite a weird situation. Mm. But it's not too... I don't know, I mean, your club isn't in the EFL mm. anymore, but when they were, yes. you, I think, <laughs> not for much longer. However, um, <laughs> however, on. no, I'm only joking, but um, very much open yeah. to play. But in the EFL, there's often a lot of struggles, isn't there, mm. with clubs in those divisions and the EFL themselves. In the Premier League, you don't see it as much, but the, the, the penalties and the, and, the, and the way that the league operate with those clubs, it can be quite harsh, can't quite it? Strict. Um, so, for example, as, as, as I think Will touched on there a little bit, you've got people like, I think, I think um, Sheffield United now at the moment, who are also at loggerheads with the EFL over similar financial issues. Now, obviously, FFP is a thing, but we just don't really see it go that far, do we, mm. in the Premier League? I mean, when was the, when was the last time, well, if it does happen, yeah. for example, Manchester City, who yeah. are ironically Burnley are playing at the weekend, often it just seems to get brushed under the carpet at some point but in the EFL really you see points deductions handed out it's, uh, quite often don't you? I mean do you think just quickly Johnny that mm. it, w it, it will affect Burnley on the pitch you often see no. off the pitch issues that translate to on the pitch no? Mm. No no I mean even if it does mm. I think the distance that I mean this is going to come this could come back to bite me mm. but the distance between first and second and even first and third obviously automatic mm. promotion it's very very it's very big so unless there's a substantial drop off, which I doubt Vincent Company will allow. And I think it's just going to be a case of keeping yeah. calm and in inevitably carrying on to a Premier League return at the first time of asking. 100%. Well, hopefully. Yeah. Just don't take Forrest's place and keep up the good commentary voice, Johnny. It was like a uh, bedtime story. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hopefully um, it didn't send you to sleep. <laughs> no. A huge event in the calendar is coming up next week with, of course, Farsity. This year being hosted right here at the University of Salford. It's sure to be an entertaining competition of sports. Yeah, Sam Armitage has the latest on Varsity. Now a proper Varsity coverage will commence. Tomorrow marks a little bit of a warm-up ahead of the big event next week. Yes, that's right. Varsity 2 takes place in Chester tomorrow all day as Salford face Chester in a variety of sporting matchups. From archery to cricket, from futsal to football and obviously including a netball, the Tekken teamers will go head to head in a bid to gain a little bit of bragging rights ahead of the big event next week. And throughout the day, a load of interesting matches are set to commence. Now with the football, the Salford second team came bottom of their division tier 5A, only winning two, drawing one and losing seven. However, the only reason they did finish bottom was because of a few walkovers here and there. They uh, ended up actually having the same record as the team above them, with a better goal difference as well. Now, as for the Chester second team, they finished bottom as well of their division, however it was in Tier 4. They had the same exact record as Salford though, two wins, one draw and a loss. So, despite both teams finishing bottom of their division, it'll be a good way to maybe get a win against each other and a bit of bragging rights ahead of next week. However, it's arguable that the main event of the evening will come in the form of the netball and it's an interesting matchup between the two sides because Salford seconds and Chester seconds played in the same division this season, so the two sides that know each other pretty well. However, when it comes to the league form, both sides had pretty different seasons in terms of results. Salford came second in 6A, winning 8 and losing 2 games. Chester, however, came rock bottom of the same division, losing all 10 of their league games. Yes, that's right. When Salford played Chester twice this season, they beat them both times, including a 51-37 victory here at the Salford Sports Centre. With two wins already under their belts against Chester Seconds this season, the netballers are feeling pretty confident ahead of their Varsity 2 match on Wednesday. I've been lucky enough to be invited down to the netballers' practice ahead of their game against Chester on Wednesday. So let's have a word with a few of their players and see how they feel. Uh, Darcy Jackson, I play goal attack and goal shooter. So are you looking forward to the big Varsity game on Wednesday? 
Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, it's my first year doing it, um, so it's a bit like in anticipation because I don't really know what to expect, but um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Are you aware that you guys have beaten Chester seconds twice already this season? Yeah, I've been told a lot about that. I think there's, um, there's a lot of confidence already with the girls and stuff that we can do it um, another time, so... Yeah, I think Vost is just a bit about, like... It's because it's not obviously like connected to the leagues and stuff. It's just about sort of having a bit of fun. If we do beat Chester, then great. How many goals are you gonna are you gonna score? Um, I can't answer that. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so after chatting to a few of the people who are going to be representing Salford this Wednesday in Varsity Two, I'm very excited to be heading down to Chester to get involved in a few of the Varsity vibes ahead of next week's big event. I've been Sam Armitage. Back to you guys in the studio. Cheers, Sam. He's got a beautiful skincare routine, Sam. You were saying. I'm always jealous. Saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always very jealous. Varsity is a big sporting yeah. event. As Darcy mentioned there, it's about a fun. Mm. I don't think it's about fun. I think it's about no. winning, John. It's, it, 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 it's got to be about the Uni of Salford bringing it home, surely. Yeah, well, my, my six aside team recently lost 19 0, <laughs> so I'm a bit more reluctant to say it's all about the winning. Yeah. Sure. I'm, but I agree with you on level. Is it taking part? Is it, oh, it never is. But I mean, <laughs> you know, I think it's one of those whereby. I used to, so I used to do undergraduate at Lancaster. Yeah. and it got really heated between York and Lancaster, Battle of the Roses it was, and you would have some <laughs> absolute crazy scenes going on over there and it was yeah. literally blood, sweat and tears. People training for weeks and months just to get to that level mm. uh, for the day, the Battle of the Universities and you know, no one wants to come out on the bottom. No, they don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to... There's a, I mean, there's so, there's so many sports involved, yes. isn't there? You've got, of course, you've got the classic ones, football, rugby, but then you've got netball. Yeah. I mean, there might even be a few other... I'm just trying to think, is there like sword fighting or something? Sword fighting. <laughs> Fencing, I believe that's Fencing called. Fencing, Fencing yes, yeah, sword fighting. <laughs> Hung on, good <laughs> sir. Hung on, yes, no. I think, yeah, sword fighting, um, maybe. Sword <laughs> fighting? Where, what school did you go to? No, I think uh, they could be doing with fencing. Sword fighting would be great, I was going to say, but in Salford, it seems like sword fighting just takes place in the streets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the stri <laughs> or the bathroom. <laughs> oh, oh Johnny, you've, that's, you've that, that's, that's, you've that is a laugh. crazy one, that's a crazy yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you can you, adjust yourself, compose yourself, get back in the game. Uh, um, uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, I think... No, to be fair, I think it's one of those. Also, there used to be a sport, Ultimate Frisbee, yeah. that was very, very good. I remember doing a commentary on it, and I was a bit worse. Commentary on Ultimate Frisbee? I did, yeah. My friend did it back in uh, York, and he was competing. Uh, what for Lancaster, you okay? Still thinking about swords? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, I'm lost, Johnny, saying, I'm no, lost. No, no, you're lost. So, as uh, I was saying, Ultimate Frisbee, what a wonderful sport. It was actually self-refereed, <laughs> believe it or not. So, yeah. you had people... Uh, no souls were involved, and everyone was treating it really seriously. Oh, right. uh, and there were all these. New, I got I got given a, a list beforehand, and this is what happens when you're the commentator. You get mm. given a list beforehand of all the of all the rules and things, and it's just about having a go on the day, just spontaneously getting thrown in at the deep end, just like on this show, yeah. and making the best of it. <laughs> I love how it. I love how it all goes wrong, Johnny. When uh, <laughs> okay. you come into Evie, yep. um, you come in to replace Evie. Right. Yeah. Last week, me and Blow the Whistle regular Leo had the absolute pleasure of spending some time with our good friends Blabbermouths. We weren't red, and we visited a coffee shop in Man. Uh, we visited Jill Scott's coffee shop in Manchester. Mm. On guard, <laughs> Johnny. Oh, Scott, I was so caught up in the swords. Scott is perhaps the most well known for her international career. The 35 year old is one of only two players, men and women, to win over 150 caps for England, amassing 161 appearances for the Lionesses before retiring in August 2022. Yes, let's take a look back at some of the best bits from the visit. Yes, there we are. Box to box. We are here with the Blow the Whistles, but they've gone inside. We'll have to move we'll them <laughs> Yeah, 
she's great? Mm hmm She's ready. Mm. Is it good? Like chocolate mugs, it's just such a good Is it you've got? Iced caramel latte with oat milk, because I'm one of those that has to get oat milk. It's not as nice as Leo, because it hasn't got cream on it, but... It's quite strong. You mixed it? No. Yeah. It's nice. Um, it's a standardised coffee. Can't really taste the caramel, to be honest with you. Okay. But apart from that, I'll give it a, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. But I think... I, I, I like this place. It's trendy, it's modern, it's unique. Yeah. Do you know what? I might have to join Blammer Mouse on their hunt for more coffee shops. It's quite like it. <laughs> what did you all get? To a company, my Kinder Bueno, follow me. <laughs> I got a nice mocha. Garnish with cream and a little bit of chocolate sauce. Let's get a taste. <laughs> oh, no way. It's quite a ripe flavour. A ripe? A ripe flavour. <laughs> It's almost as if you can taste the cocoa beans that have been plucked freshly from the Amazonian rainforest. I think it's got quite a South American feel to it. The flavour is it's, it's sweet and it's bitter and it's almost tangy for chocolate taste. Just a little bit of a stir and maybe tangy. mess up the cream a little bit. I really actually kind of want to up a little bit here. I'm not sure a mocha should be tangy. It is. Have, have a taste, Emma. See if you agree with me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is fun. I'm a little bit concerned, why should it be tangy? Well, you're just going to get the cream, not the chocolate. No, I've got the chocolate. You've got it on your nose. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I've got it on your nose. Do you see what I mean? Tangy. It's tangy. Fun, right, Emma. It's got chocolate on it, so automatic. Good points. <laughs> I like the glass as well. It You've gone for a hot one. Yeah. She was a but smart one. It's selling. It's literally selling. I know, and we've yes. all gone for cold and drinks. I think it. That's very good. It's is good. it? Mm -hmm. The cup's cute. It's like a perfect like, level of like strong and chocolate, like it's just good. If you give it a little mix, you can you lift it up. So it's really, really wonderful. <laughs> You're going to have to edit this right down. It's, it's kind of mixing, it's kind of mixing. Okay, I'll leave it like that. Yeah, okay. Right. Ready? You're going to think that's strong, I can guarantee. Yeah, obviously caramel, okay. iced caramel latte. Okay. Did you say a beer? What? Thoughts? <laughs> Grace can't take coffee. <laughs> right. I go with Max if that there's not much caramel. I'm okay. going to with that because he just hit the coffee. Yeah. Oh, so, right, so we've all just got out of uh, box to box. Guys, oh, what do you think? It's snowing in his and yeah, no, it's nice. Dead. I think it's just dead nice. Um, <laughs> the Uber's <laughs> coming now, Grace. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. oh right. Uber yeah. Uh, but yeah, did have a nice time anyway. It was yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you for the yes. invite, Blabber Mouse. Yeah. You can do one again? Yeah. Bla You'll have to come again on a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to Blabber go on because it'll busy, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Blabbermouth. Good to see. That's all we've got time for on this episode. We'll be back next week with a varsity special and maybe some sword fighting, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Remember to follow us across social media on blowthewistle.us. We'll see you next time for another swashbuckling show. Goodbye. Goodbye.